Good afternoon and welcome uh, to here at the headquarters of the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. Another Saturday, another wonderful Saturday, and we have a topic to discuss with you. But before we get into that, the great betrayal, before we get into the great betrayal, let's do the work. Let's like, let's share, let's comment, let's get excited, let's get people in here. Uh, today is a topic that they must hear. I know they can come back later and listen, but let's do some groundwork and get them in there. The great betrayal. Peace to all of our newcomers. Peace to all of our first time visitors. Peace to all of the old brethren, the new brethren, and everybody in between. And those who are just watching to see what's up. Peace to you too. I'm Elder Kirk. I've been given the task, the daunting task, of opening up before we get the headliner, Priest Tyrone. And we're both gonna talk about the great betrayal. There's so much, so many different angles that we could talk about this. But I want you to take a seat and let's get into things. <clears throat> Can I start off with a story? Can I bring you with a story? So there's an individual and they're driving a car on the highway and they're going 90 kilometers per hour and they're zooming and they're zooming. <clears throat> Never been in an accident. Somebody hits them or clips them and they spin out and the car turns and tumbles and tumbles, goes off of the highway onto the grass, rolls in by the creek. <clears throat> Boom, just like the television shows and the flame and the fire pops up. Somebody calls the ambulance naturally and the ambulance pulls up. The ambulance get in there and they get the jaws of life and they open up the vehicle. They pull you out. <clears throat> and they're looking at you and as life is starting to slip away, they start to do the thing on the chest where they pump the chest and they pump and they pump. They do that. All right, they start beating, tear the shirt open, they get the clear and they do all of that. Clear, right, and they do all of that. <clears throat> Try to revive. Eyes open up for a moment. And they're telling you, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Stick with her. We're going to be with you all the way. We loves you. Come on. We all pulling it for you. Come on. Stay in there. And as your eyes, as the person's eyes start to close, and the body starts to get cold, the medic looks left. And looks right and reaches into your back pocket and grabs your wallet. Puts it in their back pocket. Life is slipping away. Medic goes up the sleeve and goes like this and clicks the Rolex and pulls the Rolex off. And puts it in their left pocket. And the person just drifts away into the abyss. Then you hear the beep, the flat line. <clears throat> That's a heck of a story, no? That is a, 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 a betrayal beyond, betrayal of the oath that the medic took to save and preserve life and integrity and the yada, 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 and all that good stuff. But you know what that story likens onto? It likens onto those institutions that betray my people. They liken onto the institutions that betray my people. We're going to give you life. We're going to show you the way. We'll never do you wrong. God is here. God is there. <clears throat> but when the time comes, they got their hand in your back pocket. They got the Rolex and they got the gold cufflinks. Heck, they even reach in and grab the gold chain before you go. My people love a betrayal. My people love a good betrayal. My people are gluttons for a good, old, old-fashioned betrayal. They love it. 
They want a good betrayal. They seek it. They run after it. They want a full glass of betrayal with the side, a side order of more betrayal. My people love a good betrayal. Please follow me over to Psalms 83. You know that I'm taking you somewhere. We're gonna go there slowly, but we're gonna get there. So I want you to follow along. <clears throat> Psalms 83, these are all golden scriptures. Golden, golden, golden. But alas, <laughs> as we read, there's always something else that jumps out and hits us. Psalms 83, from the top, and it goes. Keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. <clears throat> God has enemies? Hmm. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So today is a Jacobite show. Okay, this message is a Jacobite message. That's what this is. All of our guests, get the popcorn, listen and follow along, you are welcome. But this one is, this is a toss, a pitch to our Jacobites who love a good betrayal. Three says, they have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of who, if you're reading along, the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. By goodness, this is a Bible. This is a religious book. Isn't this about love? Isn't this about godly things and about togetherness and about holding hands and kumbayas? Isn't this all about fluffy and good things? How can we open a Bible about God and religious things and goodly things? And it says, they have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel will be no more in their remembrance. What? What? Cut them off so that they would not remember any longer who they are. Maybe even nobody would remember that we would remove them. <clears throat> hey. My people love a great, great betrayal. They love it. Verse 5, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Check this out. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and the Hagarines or Hagar. You know, all this time, I've, I've over the years reading this scripture, I never looked at it that Verse 6, you're talking about family and step-aunties and cousins and step-moms and all that, if I use that language, right? Edom, family, Ishmael, family, Hagar, mother of Ishmael, right? They are who will be confederate and gather together. You mean the people that we know? You mean the people who, who were once close, who have some sort of linkage with us? They will get together to be confederate that the name, our name, would be no longer in our remembrance? Verse 7. Gebal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre, Asher also is joined with them that have helped the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites. And we could stop reading, but I want to read this. I want to read this. Verse 9. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to the Caesarea, and to Jab, and as the brook of Kassan, which perished at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Orab and like Zeb. Yea, all the princes and Zeba and the Zalmunna, who said, let us... Take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Really? Oh my God, make them like a wheel, as a stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth at wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. So, Lord, persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame 
that they may, they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish. That men may know that thou art whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. And I wanted to read that. Because <clears throat> those that are banded together to erase Israel from our remembrance, the writer here says, even though they attempt to do that, blow them away, Lord. Blow them off of the chessboard, Lord. <clears throat> My people love a great betrayal. You see, right before our eyes, we read and we see that there is an attempt to remove Israel from our remembrance. Hmm. People out there want to remove Israel from our remembrance. Even ones that were close with us, they want to get us out of there. Even with that said, my people still don't care. My people are good. They would still listen to those who want to remove our identity and our name from our remembrance. They would still sit down and eat, lallygag, hold hands, and kumbaya with those that want to betray us. Because my people love a great betrayal. Let's go to Matthew 2 right quick. I got something for you, so stick around. I got something for you. <clears throat> We're going to read from verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. His disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world? That's a great question. Sitting there with the Christ and the Christ has some information that we're not privy to? That's a good question that I would ask. I wouldn't ask for, oh, maybe I would. Um, uh, Lennox would probably ask for the lotto numbers. All right? I don't know. He's right there. But they ask, when would these things be? When would the end be? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. You know, out of all the different deities of the earth and all the different things that there are, and I can be corrected if you can correct me, you know? I don't know if I see somebody coming and saying, I am Buddha down at, at uh, square one. I'm the reincarnate of Buddha. I don't know if I've seen that yet. I haven't seen too many. Um, I am Osiris, incarnate down in Scarborough. I never see that. I never see people in the news talking about all these different deities are back and they're in persons. They're people and individuals. For some reason, it's always around Jesus and Christ. Everywhere you go, they pop up. It's Jesus and Christ. It's Jesus and Christ all over the world. And the bread that you have with your, your toast in the morning, there's a face Right? A face comes up on the bread and it's a Jesus face. And they say, Jesus is in Bulgaria on a man's toast. All right? As we heard the story with the statue of Jesus somewhere, <laughs> and the water was dripping down off of the, the forehead, down onto the toes, and they said, Jesus bleedeth, or Jesus giving holy water. And the people went and they opened their mouths and they brought their cups because the statue of the Jesus is leaking. And the people drank for blessings, and then they found out that it was, the, it was the washroom and the toilet that was leaking up above, and it had a slow drip, and it dripped straight down to the foot, and the people were sipping of these things. But nonetheless, it's always a Jesus, 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 for some strange reason. Verse 6, <clears throat> And you shall hear 
of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Stay with me, I'm taking you somewhere. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. Even back then these things is happening, even today these things are happening. <clears throat> All these are the beginnings of sorrows, Jesus says. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. You know, it's, it all ties together, you know. We just read Psalms 83. The nations will be confederate and they'll band together. And of course, now Christ is there and he says, yeah, and guess what? I am affiliated. I'm affiliated with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is I. And the same way that they would hate him is the same way they hate me. And the same way they would hate me is the same way they would hate you. They would hate you the same. They would be confederate the same. Back then in Psalms 83, in Matthew 24, and guess what? In 2022. 10. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. You know, when I read this, I thought about it. You know, I had lots of thought with this. And I said, wow, you know. The opportunity arises from the enemies, the ops, those that betray Israel, those that betray you. And you know when the opportunity arises? It, it arises when many are offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. That's, that's what happens. Many of the children would be offended, and then they're offended, then they start to hate one another. And then they're against one another. And then the door swings open, and guess who comes in? The ops. Now, what do the ops do immediately? Well, they set up false prophets, and they rise them up so that they shall deceive you. Just a thought. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. We're not talking about the love of no world. We're talking about Israel here. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Okay, guys? There's your answer. <clears throat> when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken about by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. You know, so this prompted me to go to Daniel and to read about the abomination of desolation. All Daniel talks about is, you see, because Israel disobeyed the law and it turned against God, there was punishment. And because of punishment, there is a reaction from God. It, 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 the, the story never changed. It never changed. It doesn't matter if you go to Psalm 83, if you go to Matthew 24, you go to Daniel. It, it doesn't, it all, it's all one connecting story. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and lo, and to them that give suck in those days. And when that day is an awful and terrible day. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. You know, so many things to talk about here. Neither in the Sabbath day. Jesus is talking about the Sabbath day here. Pray that in the future when this thing to come, in the end, pray that it's not on a Sabbath day. You mean there's a Sabbath day then? In the future. We are not talking about that today. 
Let's keep going. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those shall be, the day shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Hey, my people that love a good betrayal. When they say there is Christ and here is Christ, here's the church of Christ, here's the building of Christ, here's the rock of Christ, here's the, the this of Christ, the boat of Christ, the assembly of Christ, the this of that, da, 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 da. Believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets. And you know why these guys raise up? Because going back to verse 10, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise up. So when we mess up, then the door opens up and it allows others to do as they wish. And guess what? They have. They have. They spent a lot of, they spent millennia betraying you, my people. I'm going to get there. Verse 24 says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very, the very, very elect. If it were possible, these false Christs and prophets would even deceive the very elect if it were possible. But because the elect are the elect, it's not possible. But if it were possible, they would be deceived, just like those of you of my people who currently sit in the seat of the unelected. <clears throat> Why do I read this? <laughs> Because you've been betrayed. Because you've been betrayed. The medic opened up. The, the uh, car door took you out. And as you died, they took your wallet out of your back pocket. As they told you, keep on, keep on. You can do it. You can do it. We're here with you. As they tried to pump. As they're pumping, one hand is taking off the Rolex watch. It's taking the Rolex watch off. And as soon as the eyes go dim and there's no life in it, and the beep, they take off the chain and whatever else they got, the Gucci slides, they take the Gucci slides off and tuck it in the bag. <clears throat> Even the elect would be fooled if they could be. So don't get it twisted and don't think that everything is sweet. Don't think that everything is curry because it's not. Because if it were, the very elect would be fooled. So people like you and I, we're here and the great betrayers betray us. And some of us have been caught up for millennia. Millennia, millennia. <clears throat> okay. I think we can go to Isaiah real quick. Eh, let's go to Numbers. Let's get us. Numbers 14. Let's do that. Verse, uh, Numbers 14, verse 1, we read and it says, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God where we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children would be praying. We know this story. That's why I'm rifling through it. So we leave, and God takes us out. And we're now there, and we're watching. Excuse me. The miracles unfolded, and the Egyptians are following along, and they're saying, wow, wow. Is this where you took us? Is this what, what's happening? Man, 
Are we about to die? Man, who are you? What is this? How did we trust you? What God told you to do this again, Moses? Are you, are you sure? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. The Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it, it is exceedingly good. If the Lord delighteth in us, then he will bring us into the land and give us this land which flow milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread. For they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade, bade stone them with stone. Shut up! In other words. And let's pick up some rock stones and clear them out of here. And the glory of the Lord appeared at that point. <laughs> in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have shown among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and disinherit them. And disinherit them. And will make thee a greater nation a mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, Lord, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Humbly, don't do that. Because you can do that, but if you do it, then the Egyptians, the other nations, are going to say, you're a weak God. You couldn't control these, this brood. You couldn't handle them, and you took them, you took, you bit off more than you could handle, and you brought them out, and you couldn't deal with them, so you had to wipe them out because you were not able to continue. So don't do it. <clears throat> As you see, God takes these things personal personal all the talking and the yapping going back between Caleb everybody else no one was talking to God personally but he stepped in and immediately says right there right there and he said how long would this people provoke me how long would this people hate me how long would they be against me all the talk that anybody could talk it is me it is I that everybody talks against First Samuel says, the people said, hey, you have a, you put your sons as judges. Samuel, you put your sons as judges. <clears throat> but we don't want them. They do things that they shouldn't do. I'll tell you what, let's have an idea. Let's get a king like the other nations. You know these stories. You know these stories. Let's get a king like the other nations. Let's get a king like the other nations, and the king can lead us. <clears throat> it wasn't, they were not saying, let us replace God. Let's get another God. They weren't saying, let us get another God like the other nations. They said, let's, instead of this judge thing that's going on here that you're setting up, let's, let's not do that, and let's get a king. They weren't saying, let's replace God. Let's get a king. But God took this personal as he does, as we got to see the personality that he has. He took it personal and said, it is not you that they rejected. It's not you they rejected. It's who? <clears throat> it's me they reject. Why am I reading this? Well, those that perform the great betrayal against the children of Israel, those that lead the children of Israel the wrong way, those that fill them with these poisonous stories that are lies and falsehood, those that have hatred, those that have hatred for the children of Israel. It is not Israel that you hate. 
Guess who? <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's hard to say that these people hate God. For they teach these things in a pulpit in a church building with the Bible in their hand. Because they create songs, singing, hymns that are supposed to be sung to some spirit. It looks godly. They have on frocks and full of piety. They hug and they kiss the children like the politician. <clears throat> they have names like pastors and bishops and deacons, decoids. They have all these things. So how can I be saying that these people hate God? Don't, don't, it is not I. For God takes these things personal. God takes these things personal. As he told them, it is not you. They rejected as I. So this hatred, this hate, this great betrayal for the children of Israel, it's not on the children of Israel. Yes, the brunt of it we feel, the pressure we feel, it is us. But all in all, the hatred is not Israel. It is our God. It is our God that they hate. And it is our God that they betray. Can I read a few things? <clears throat> so, I told you I have something for you. I often talk about things like seminary and I often talk about 2,000 years of, of, the, of Christianity being unchecked and speaking against the children of Israel. And, you know, they've had 2,000 years of freedom. I often speak about that. But I want to give you some hardcore evidence here so you could understand. Why is there a hate for the children of Israel? Why do they say you are not an Israelite? Why are they so invested in that? Why do they have issues about Israel and when the whole book, I think they said four fifths of the book is all Israel. Why do they have all this disdain? Where did this come from? Why is there a doctrine that says that Israel is no more and that the Christian church is the new Israel. Where did this come from? Let's see. So I wanted to go in chronological order, but this individual here really alarmed me, so I want to start off with him first. <clears throat> but it's interesting. So, he's born in 347 A.D. His name is Saint John Chrysostom, or Christodom. Saint. This is how you get betrayed, and you don't even know it. You sit there like a dumb, dumb, dumb dummy, and you have no idea on whose shoulders you stand. You have no idea on whose shoulders you stand. You have no idea on the ideas in your mind, where they come from, but you eat them up. So check this out. <clears throat> By the way, they gave him a feast day. September 14th is his feast day. They haven't given Moses a feast day. Priest Tyrone, they have not given Moses a feast day. Happy, happy birthday. You and St. John Chrysostom. <clears throat> and he was the archbishop of Constantinople. All right? They say that this guy is one of the Western Christianity's favorite father of the church. So this guy is a big wig in their world. He's an archbishop in their world. 
They've given him a feast day to celebrate him. He's been long dead. He died 407. Long dead. He's gone. But they celebrate this guy. But check this out. He wrote eight sermons or homilies denouncing members of his following that were keeping feast, Sabbaths, and circumcision. <laughs> huh? Did you hear that? Saint, Saint John Chrysostom. I could be butchering his name, but I don't care. Born 347. They made him a bishop of Constantinople, and they gave him a feast day that every September 14th, the Western Church has a feast day for him. He's been dead from 407. So they celebrate this guy. That's a big, that's a big guy there, right? And they said that he is one of the favorite, pretty much the favorite of the early church fathers. What did he teach? He said he denounced members of his following that were keeping feast, the feast in the Old Testament, Sabbaths, and circumcision. I'm not done yet. He saw his church as eroding because of this. So the church was depleting. That's how he saw it. So he held Israelites responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus. Okay. He compared the synagogue to a pagan temple. Saint John Christodom. Representing it as a source of all vices and heresies. He described it as a place worse than a brothel. The synagogue of the Israelites, worse than a brothel and a, and a drinking shop, a rum bar. It was a den of scoundrels. The repair of the wild beasts, the temple of demons, the refuge of debauchery, and the cavern of devils, poetic a criminal assembly of the assassins of Christ. He said that among the Jews, the priests sell and purchase the priesthood. He declared that in accordance with the sentiments of saints, he hated both the synagogue and the Jews, saying that the demons dwell in the synagogue and also in the souls of the Jews and describing them as growing fit for slaughter. This is one of the favorite early church fathers. They gave him saint. They gave him a feast day. And they made him a bishop of something somewhere. He celebrated till today. You see how he hates Israelites? Is that it? One guy? Case study has one guy? No. Ignatius. So we're going to go chronological here. Ignatius of Antioch. He was born 50 AD. Guess what he was? The Bishop of Antioch. He also has a feast day, December 20th. Anybody here got a feast day? He taught that those who partake of the Passover are partakers with those who kill Jesus. Trash. Trash. Let's go to 100 AD. Justin Martyr, he was made a saint by the Catholic Church, a saint. The Eastern Orthodox Church and the Oriental Orthodox Churches and the Anglican Church gave him a feast day, June 1st and other days. Glory! <laughs> Glory! <laughs> do, you, do you see this? My people. Do you see how early, how long ago this is? <clears throat> so as they're building the pillars and the foundation of what it is that they do, long before you were born, we had individuals who were taught, right, who were given the doorway or grace, let's call it what it is, that were given grace, which came from, 
Paul from the tribe of Benjamin. And just a little later, these people hate Israel. And these are the people that have written books. The libraries in the old early churches, these are the people that furnish these books. These are the bishops and the leaders of their movement that give the ideology to the people. They formed, they formed the characteristics of, I'm not gonna call them church anymore, of their assembly. Formed it, the opinions and the flavor, these are the ones and they're celebrated by it. Justin claimed God's covenant with Israel was no longer valid and that the Gentiles had replaced the Jews. Guys, this is 2,000 years ago. This is 2,000 years ago. Have you been betrayed? <laughs> you go to these people's organizations and institutions. You sit down and listen to them. You're the ones that pay your money to go to their seminaries. You're the one that claps and sings and you finance them. It is you, it is my people, like I said. Today, this is a Jacobite show. This is a Jacobite show. But all guests are welcome. We're not shunning anybody. But I wanna talk to my people today. I wanna, I wanna eyeball, eyeball to you today. I wanna talk to you today. On whose shoulders do you stand? On what doctrine do you give patronage? Do you know why you say the things that you say? Do you know why you hate Israel? Do you know why you say that the covenant is no longer with Israel? You don't even know why. Because it's not, it's not in the Bible. But Justin Martyr 2,000 years ago said it. Let's go. Arrhenius. Interesting name. Very fitting. Arrhenius. Bishop. Once again, they made him a bishop. He has a feast day. This is June the 28th. He also has a feast day. These guys are celebrated. <clears throat> you remember we just read where God said, move, 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 move. I'm going to disinherit Israel. And Moses pleaded and said, you can't do that. And God listened. We just read that. We just read that. Let me tell you what Arrhenus, who was born in 130 AD, this is what he said 2,000 years ago. He declared the Jews were disinherited from the grace of God. Come on, come on now. This is what he taught. This is a bishop. This is what he taught his parishioners. This is what he wrote about in books. This is how he acted. This is how, if he saw Israelites, this is the disdain that he had. It's the flavor. These are big wigs 2,000 years ago. The people followed along. They don't like Israel. But who cares? This is the reason why you don't like Israel. This is the reason why it's difficult for you to take this, this, spoon, this tablespoon of medicine. And you have no idea where it came from. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Tertullian, 155 A.D. He's called the father of Latin Christianity. The father of Latin Christianity. And the founder of Western theology. Wow. <laughs> wow, we. <clears throat> uh, I didn't see any feast days for him, so maybe he, he fell off at the end or something. Uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, he didn't get one. But he's called the father of Latin Christianity. Maybe they didn't really respect the Latins. Who knows? Anyway, what did he say? Well, he taught back in 150, between 155 and 230. Uh, he blamed the Jews for the death of Jesus and argued they had been rejected by God. You know, there's a, a theme that goes in a time period. It's the same theme. All these people hated Israel and wanted the demise of Israel. Hey, we read Psalm 83, did we not? We read that, which, which was spoken about a long time ago. 
they spoke against Israel. But this is not just the barbershop talk. This is not the guys playing dominoes at the side or cards and just talking street talk. These are guys who write books and form the opinion and shape theology, the founder of Western theology. These are the guys that seminaries build their programs on and teach what these say. When they say, well, we have reference sources going back to early, 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 right? Early centuries, 100, 200. They're, they're, they're talking about these dudes. That's what they're talking about. Here's another guy named Origen, 185 AD born. He's called the greatest genius to ever, sorry, he's called the greatest genius the early church ever produced. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not, hey, not Paul. You would think that at least, at least they would give Paul, he, Paul must have a feast day. Somebody Google it and see. Paul has a feast day, I'm sure they gave him. Right? But the greatest genius, the, 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 the he who formed the theology and yada, yada, yada. No, they gave, they gave that the greatest genius in the early church ever produced, Origen. <clears throat> he was responsible for much anti-Semitism, as they called it, all of which was based on his assertion that the Jews were responsible for killing Jesus. Do you see the flavor of what they do? Those people don't like them. Those people disregard them. They've been disinherited. They are nothing. They're the ones that killed Jesus. Ooh, who was it? It was them. Ooh. Disregard, dislike, disband, remove, and replace. Repeal and replace. Eusebius, 275 AD. <clears throat> You think that there's just one or two or three, or there's two or three guys, right? Or four. <clears throat> this guy was the bishop of Caesarea Martina, wherever that is. He got a feast day, uh, May the 30th, and he has a bunch of other feast days as well. He taught that the promises of Scripture were meant for the Gentiles and the curses were meant for the Jews. Asserted that the church was the true Israel. I'm not making this up, you know. I'm not making this up. <clears throat> I'm not making this up. What year is that? 275 AD. So when you go and you're, you're talking to Auntie so-and-so and Uncle so-and-so, <clears throat> and talking about Israel, and you're so motivated because you found the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries. You're so excited. You saw Elder Shadrach and blew your mind, and you contacted us, and you came, and you're eating, and you're eating, you're like, yes! And you go and you speak to someone, Auntie so-and-so, and Auntie -so, and so-and-so says, the covenant was removed from Israel long ago. Israel has been disinherited long ago. You really want to associate yourself with those that keep the Passover feast and are circumcised? Those people? And you, you, you go scripture for scripture, and you go scripture, and you can't find those things. And you wonder, where did they get this? Where did they get this? <laughs> I'm going to go through a couple more. We got 10 minutes. A couple more. I, I, I want to drive this point because it's not one or two or three people. All right? These are big wigs. The early church never produced a, a, a better product than this guy. <laughs> Hillary. Not Hilaire. Not Hilaire. It's not Hilaire, it's Hillary of Poitiers. I, my French is here in, in, in Canada. We do, uh, we have to do up to grade nine in French. And as soon as I did grade nine, I pulled out. And that's it. 
So I'm supposed to say this differently, but I'm saying it Hilary Poitiers. He's born in, two, in uh, AD 291. <clears throat> he was a bishop and a doctor of the church. Bishop and a doctor. His feast day, January 13th, and other days. All right? So a doctor of the church and a bishop. So his gown is huge, and it's purple, and it's got gold trimmings. And he walks, and there's little boys that hold a cross. You know how they do those things. And, and he's pious, and you can't say much to him. And he knows everything, all right? Big, big, big wig, big payroll here, big, 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 big wig. What did he say? Well, the doctor of the church and the bishop said, Jews are a perverse people accursed by God forever. I, I am not making this up. I'm not making this up. <clears throat> now here's a whole council, the council of Elvira. It's a whole council. 305 AD. Are you taking note to how far back this is? This ain't 1850. This is not 1903. This is not 1906. We're going way back. This betrayal was way back in the making. Way back in the making. This is an old, old, dirty and deep, dark betrayal. To the point that Israel has been removed from their, our remembrance, not mine, but you that are dumbfounded, it's been removed from your remembrance. You hate Israel. You hate the fact that I tell you that you are Israel. You hate it. You hate that I say that I'm Israel. You hate that there's an Israelite nation. You hate that we can't participate in what you do because we have our own feast to do. I can't come to the feast of St. Hilary. I can't. What, what, what's his feast day? January 13th. I can't because I think, teach, I think Elder Brian's birthday is on January 13th. So I think there's a feast that we're going to have to celebrate. So on January 13th, I can't come to the Feast of Hilaire. I can't do that. I won't be there. The Council of Elvira, 305 AD, prohibited Christians from sharing a meal with an Israelite. Would you get a load of this? The audacity. Prohibited Christians from sharing a meal with an Israelite, marrying an Israelite, blessing an Israelite, or observing the Sabbath. So these knuckleheads, 305 years after the death, they got together and they said, you cannot have a meal with those Israelites over there. You remember when Peter... You remember Peter's dream, the vision? That's, that's us. Why? Not because of hatred. When Peter was not going to sit down and eat with you, it was not because of hatred. It was not because of the color of your skin, because you could have had the same color. It was because you were uncircumcised, and we ought not to do that. But they came up with, for what reason? Don't share a meal with those Israelites. Don't marry them. Don't bless them. And do not observe the Sabbath. You know, it's a, it's a reoccurring, you know, theme. And I, you know, as I try to read between the lines as to what these people feared, <clears throat> I see it pretty clear. I think, I believe I see it pretty clear. So Paul is long gone. And you have the heavy influence of Israel. And I'm not talking about uh, Israel that did not subscribe to the Christ. I'm talking about Israel who subscribed to the Christ and followed the law, statutes, and commandments as we are supposed to. The church, in other words. That church that Peter and you are talking about, the rock, and yet that church. <clears throat> I could see the influence. I could see the Gentiles looking, 
and seeing us with Passover. They're across the street here and they see the synagogue is popping. I can see it. I can see on the Sabbath day. Hey, hey, hey we, I can see it. They don't got a Sabbath day. I can see them say, oh man, I want to come and say, hey, hey, hey. You got to be circumcised. I got to be circumcised? But if you do, you got to follow the law. Okay. I can see it. And then the council of the virus is like, so people are leaving. They're, they're marrying Israelites. They're sharing meals with Israelites. They're observing the Sabbath with Israelites. No, 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 no. We got to make a decree. 305. I got a couple of minutes. Let me rifle through one or two more. Not just one or two or four or five, guys. St. Augustine, uh, Bishop of Hippo. 354 was when he was born on his feast day. Feast day is August the 28th. Uh, somebody has a birthday then. I don't remember who. So sorry, we won't be at the Feast of, um, of, of Hungry Hippos. We're not going to be there. I'm sorry. What did he do? He asserted that the Jews deserved death, but were destined to wander the earth to witness the victory of the church over the synagogue. I'm not making this stuff up. I am not making this stuff up. I'm not trying to create something just to prove a point. They proved the point. They have proved the point. The Israelites are worthy of death. They should be killed, but they need to be left alone. He taught that. I read a little bit into Augustine. He taught that. Leave them alone. Don't kill them. Don't touch them. Leave them. They need to be there, these wretches, as witnesses. <clears throat> St. Jerome, 347. He was a priest. I don't know what a Christian priest is. I have no idea what that is. And a doctor of the church. His feast day is September 30th and he has other days. A lot of Septembers, eh? Is that your birthday? So we've, we've, so we've, covered, we've covered all these feast days. Just so, so let me break the fourth wall here and talk to the camera. All these feast days of all these saints, bishops, and all these things that we're reading, everybody, one by one, we've covered everybody's birthday there. So we won't be able to participate in St. Jerome's feast because... Somebody here will be having a feast. I apologize. What did St. Jerome say? Get a load of this. He described the Israelites as serpents wearing the image of Judas. Their psalms and prayers are the braying of donkeys. Huh? You feel good about that? Gregory of Nyssa, 394. He's a bishop of Cappadocia. January 10th. January 10th? Ah, so I guess we, I guess we can go to the feast day. <laughs> the Jews are a brood of vipers, haters of goodness. Can we put this in the trash? Garbage. During the Middle Ages... They would make propaganda plays to create hatred for Israelites. So I got a 60 seconds to do this. We would move, we're moving up now. We went from the early now to, to, to the middle here. They made plays to propaganda. And there's, there's so much more. The oldest seminary in the United States is 1807. It's not long ago. We see we went way back. And we see all the hatred for Israel. So, whose shoulders do you stand on? Again, today is a Jacobite show. Whose shoulders do you stand on? What church? Do you know why you hate Israel? Do you have any idea why you hate Israel? Do you know why you hate the feast? Do you know why you don't want to keep the feast? Do you know why you don't want to hear us? Do you know why you say Israel is no more and the covenant is no more and all that and everything? Well, these early... Church fathers betrayed you. They taught them way back. Until we meet again, study for yourself. 
I'm not making this stuff up. It's all trash. Their teachings are all garbage. Priest Tyrone is coming up, and we're going to continue talking about the great betrayal. Thank you for joining us today, and peace. Enjoying the program so far. We're excited you've joined us for today's event. If this is your first time, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to click the notification bell to be kept up to date with all the latest news. Also, take a second to like, comment, and share our videos. That's right, like, comment, and share our videos. We would really appreciate that. Also, we are really passionate about sharing our Israelite culture and would welcome your generosity in helping us to reach more people. So please feel free to leave us a donation. If you would like to learn more or are thinking about joining us, then please go ahead and fill out the form in the description box below and a member of the Welcome Committee will be in contact. Thank you so much for your time. And I leave you with peace, love, truth, prosperity, and power. Thank you very much, Priest Kirk. That was excellent. Let's begin with Psalms 41. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me, and heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favourest me, because my enemy doth not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity, and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and amen. Selah and selah. Amen. That was a great opening for a great subject matter called the Great Betrayal by our priest Kirk. And just handing over for what priest Kirk actually was speaking about is very deep about the betrayal and who has betrayed us from years and years ago. And priest Kirk went down a good line of betrayal, but there's something that he said and immediately made me think about this particular scripture with regards to our God and this betrayal. Let's go quickly first to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. And this is just a continuation from what Priest Kirk actually said, you see, because they believe that what our God has said has all come to an end. They said that now the Jews or the Israelites, the God of Israel has done away with them. The God of Israel doesn't want them. They don't, you know, the synagogue is all perverted and all these foolishness, what they say. Well, let's say the same Christ that you claim to be calling upon. Let's see what he says. And he reads from Matthew 24. I'm going to read from verse 35. And it reads this. It says, I'll read from verse 34. It says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass. Case closed. Case closed. Everything what the God of Israel has said through his son, the Christ, because you see, the Christ got his word, the words that he speaketh from the God of Israel. Therefore, I want to move straight now to another scripture in the book of John. And let's go quickly. Let's turn to the book of John, chapter 4. And this is again on the back of what Priest Kirk was saying. I'm going to read from verse 22. To 24, it says, Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. We know who we are speaking about. 
We know who we call upon. We know who we worship, Israel. But you don't know who you worship because the person has betrayed you into worshiping them. Who is that person? That's why I love the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries so much because we came up here today and we're speaking, but Priest Kirk and I haven't even spoken once about this subject matter. Not once. Yet still he tied in perfectly to where I'm going to be going into. And again, we speak about this. One message and it's one spirit. One body. Even the body of the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Even the Christ being the head of the church. Which is us. And this is something I want to really for all to understand who's listening. I'm going to read this scripture. Let me start again. For those that didn't catch it, I'm reading from the book of John 4. And I'm reading from, chat, from verse 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship for salvation. Deliverance is of the Jews, Israel. But you said the Jews are scornful, they're wicked, as um, Priest Kurt just read. All these so-called saints said that they're evil and this, and you celebrate them. You fill up their shrines daily, evil, and worship them, their stinking God. Well, let's, well, let's, we worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it goes on, it says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father. You see, you're calling Jesus, Jesus is dead. The Christ can never die, you see, because that's who's speaking. And the Christ is speaking about his Father just now and throughout. But we're focusing here. He says, those who worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Do you understand? We worship. We know what we worship. Ye worship, you know not what. For you worship a lie and it's God of the dead. Let's read on. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We close the case even there even more so. So when you're celebrating all these worship and these holidays of the dead, we have Moses, we have Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, surname Israel. Not one feast day unto them do I see or have I heard priest Kirk even read. Not one. But yet still you're willing to believe the lie. It's sweet to the soul, the betrayal. The betrayal is deep, and it's a great, great betrayal. Now, I'm going to go through a series of scriptures just to show just how you could be betraying the God, the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I love the fact that Priest Kirk went into the fact that said that when they were killing our prophets, when they wanted to stone Moses and Aaron, when they wanted to do all the things, let's make us a captain and go back to Egypt. Let's go worship the God of the dead. It wasn't against Israel. It was always against the God of Israel. That's why he read Psalms 83. Perfect. Let's cut them off from being a people. That the name of Israel. Who named us Israel? Whose name do we call upon? Who? The God of Israel shall be no longer in their remembrance. Not only you as a people is God, but your God is nothing. And that's what they do to you. That's why you're going to be dressing yourself up in your fine suit and your lipstick and your hair done, and they're going to walk into the shrine and say you're holy. You are the most unholy person and vessel ever known to man. Because everything that you've done, you polluted your system with the lies. You polluted the system with everything contrary to what the God of Israel has stated in this book, which is open for all to read. Everyone knows the, the, the popular language of the world is English. I'm reading English. But it, in order to confuse you, in order to mess your mind up, they put 50 million translations, all of which are lying, betraying you because the truth, you, if you don't know the truth, how could you serve the God of Israel? But yet still the Israelite nation worldwide ministry speaks it and you reject it, just as, Pre Kirk, as Priest Kirk said, because it's why the lie is sweet to the soul. You believe it because someone called themselves a saint and made themselves a God over you. They call themselves father when there's only one father who is in, my, in heaven. The same the Christ said, our father who art in heaven. He never said our father who took a quick sm smoke and went down and went into a box and said, confess your sins to me. That's not father. That is a devil. And I understand you might find it offensive. But the truth is, and by if you believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and his son, the Christ, this would not offend you. But yet still be meat to your soul. 
and marrow to your bones so that you'll be able to say, my God, what a grave mistake. But guess what? You're alive and breathing, healthy and well. You have the opportunity to make that change. Woe unto you when you sleep or die. Knowing and hearing this truth and do nothing about it, it would have been better you never ever heard the name, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Better still even said, well, I'll, I'll save where I want to go for a little later. But let's now turn to the book of Isaiah. I'm going to go a little bit different to where Priest Kirk went because he, he really opened that up and detailed and gave you a tremendous amount of information. But I want to go to the book of Ezekiel. No, Isaiah, sorry. Let's go to Isaiah first. And I want to go to Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. And welcome friends and guests who are joining us for the first time listening to the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries, you are most, most welcome. And I'm going to read from verse 12. No, I'll go up a little bit more. It says, all. No. Verse 11. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. You know, people are high-minded and pumped up. What do they look like? Okay, I'm going to describe something to you. Thy pump is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy voils, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. <laughs> now we're getting into a juicy part. It says, How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? So, this being that you all love to call father you call him father you call him what's the other words horus you call him nimrod you call him osiris you call him jesus let's let's get deeper into what who you call him it says for thou hast said in thine heart now this is somebody and i'm going to go deeper a bit more you, this is somebody who was in heaven but has now fallen to earth. He's been cast out by Michael, the most powerful archangel, warlord. I like that. Sometimes I think to myself, if I could see what he looked like and the sword drawn and the power, and he's there and you fight. I like a good fight, by the way. I like a good battle. You know, sometimes when you're in the war and you go in and you hit and you feel good because you're fighting on the side of truth. You're fighting on the side of righteousness. This is what Michael did. And he cast out that old dragon, even Lucifer. How has he fallen? He has fallen. Let's read it. And this is what I like. It says, How art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. What kind of pomp and audacity is that? Thou created one. Thou that the God of Israel made. You've been cast down and pushed down to earth. Now you're saying you're going to ascend back up into heaven. Like it's easy to walk in. But do you understand what's taking place here? You see, it's, it's, it's the making of rebellion. It's the making of turning against your creator. It is the making of betrayal. The one I trusted is sitting beside me. I thought you were with me. We're in heavenly places. There's certain places where you've been. I'll get into that. And now you turn against me. You turn against me. And not only you, you deserve third of heaven. You deceived and lied and caused another 33% to betray me, the God of Israel, God of gods. You did it. And now, this 33 that once glorified the God of Israel, that once sang songs to the God of Israel, that once worshipped the God of Israel, you don't know how long they were up there doing what they were doing before this fall came. They were there in the midst of heaven, walking up and down, 
doing whatever the heavenly hosts do, and now you decide to deceive them and cast down to the earth, and you betray the Holy One, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You betrayed him. So let's see where your betrayal starts. Those, as Priest Kirk said, he's speaking to Jacob. May the ears of Israel also listen in the words of Elder Andrew keenly. Understand what's being said. Where did this betrayal really start? Let's get in. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that shall see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the worlds as wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the houses of the prison? Do you understand? He, listen, in how many verses, in how many, five verses, your beginning, middle, and end is described. Five verses. Five. You're going to be brought down low to the lowest pit in the hell because of what you did. What you did by deceiving the nations, deceiving the earth, flattening them. Don't understand. Not just destroying. He's talking about going in and spiritually tearing them apart. Destroying the minds of the children of Jacob and Israel. To do what? To turn against the God of Israel and betray them. And do what? Repeat exactly what he did. To turn against the God of Israel. That's it. That's all he's doing. That's his job because he did it to the God of Israel. Why you think the God of Israel is going to bless you? And you ever think, of course. But therefore, guess what he will also do? He'll say, right, how can I get this one to turn against the God of Israel? What am I going to do? What, what story am I going to make? What situation am I going to make to make you turn your back against the God of Israel and betray him just like me? And there's a reason why I say he wants you to betray them just like him. We'll get there. Because it's always a plan. Don't think, oh, this has happened. It's a plan. Strategic plan put down from before you and I were born. When there was war up in the heavens and they knew what was happening. They understood spiritual things. And Elder Andor and... Um, Elder Michael and I were speaking with Elder Castrilli. How can we fathom spiritual things? We are but bare flesh and bone. We can only do as much as our mind can possibly conceive. They spoke to man as if, you know, you, you guys are very, very simple. But I'm going to try and talk to you as much in terms you might be able to understand. Might. Not that you will, you will but through the spirit. And this is why I love the nation, you see. Because to write this down, people think that we're outside the nation. I know it, well, I know everything, but then why? You have not the spirit of truth with you. If you have the spirit of truth with you, nothing can be revealed. Everything you're reading is foolishness. You're making up your own way. But we're talking about the God of Israel here, and we're talking about Lucifer. He wants, he deceived 33% to turn against the God of Israel any way how he chose. He chose it through a lie. He chose it, he had time going and speaking and talking and murmuring. All these things, you know, get this one. They were probably turning against each other in there. Of course, they're going to turn against the God of Israel. No unity. Then they all decided to follow the one man, their leader, just like they said. What did they say? Come, make us a captain. It's the same spirit. That's what I'm trying to say. Come, let's make a captain to go back to Egypt and worship the dead. Same thing. Follow the same de deceiver, Lucifer. Come, Lucifer. Yeah, 33%. They're all following him down to hell. Same thing with our people. Let's make a captain go right back to Egypt. Same pattern. Use the same stinking spirit to go and deceive millions of our people. Yet still two came back with a good report. Ten with an evil report. One stinking spirit. That decided that decide to go and to pollute the whole congregation of them. I say stinking because it does smell. It smells bad. It's not a good smell. Our God has sweet aroma to truth. It smells good. It's fresh. All right, let's continue. So we understand who our fallen opposition is. And has, he's not weak and just how powerful he can be. But our God is greater and above all. You see, he needs those loyal <laughs> brethren. You see, Michael was loyal. Michael was loyal. He stayed loyal to the God of Israel. And the angels that fought alongside Michael were loyal to the God of Israel and the Christ. They said, don't worry, Father. Don't worry. We've got your back. We ain't leaving you. There's a lot. There might be a lot of them there, but we're going. 
and he, could you imagine? I want you to understand what betrayal is. They, they stood up. And you can imagine they're all around the presence of our God. And you know what's going on? You've got Michael saying, you guys stand God at the throne of heaven. You guys stand God at the Christ. You guys, there's layers. We'll go, and the man standing there with sword, flaming swords, and the sword and the spear. And they're around the throne of heaven. And they're guarding our God. Now you guys coming because they're coming to overthrow. They're coming to get us. But no, Michael come down with the sword and just annihilate them. And fight with the rest of the saints of heaven. Even the angels of heaven and of our God, and pull them down, and cast them out with a great battle, and a great shout, and the victory was raised because our God was there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't envision it was just a little mini-me throw out. No, it was a war. It was a battle. There was a battle. There was a fight. They put up resistance, because why? What did he say? What did he say? In verse 13, he said what? I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High, so you know what his intentions were. His intention was to be God, and the world bow down to him. So, who is God of Israel going to bow down to? He's a joker. I don't care what he says. I don't care what no one says. That's what it is. But he formulate his whole plan so that you were following his footsteps. You know, like they say, like father, like son. You ever heard that, that saying? And it's true. You see some of the sons follow exactly the same footsteps of their father, good or bad, or good and bad. They follow the same light. So let's read into where I'm going with that. So let's turn to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 28. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 28. I'm going to read. I'll read from verse 12. And it reads thus, it says, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of, vis full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond. And the diamond. Who likes diamonds? <laughs> the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship, of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Do you understand something? You know, the God of Israel takes his time. And when he's building up a man, it's time. I'm going to invest time and effort into you. Let's read the scriptures carefully and look at yourself and don't make Foolish mistakes. He invested time in Lucifer. He made everything in him perfect. He invested diamonds, gold, carbuncles, fine onyx, the windpipes. When you speak, could you mind the sounds that you make? You know, voice always commands authority. Always does. Everything. People turn and listen. Sometimes it's a voice. When you hear, I give you an example on the radio, and you hear the voice personality, that voice, it makes you want to listen to that voice. Could have a certain distinct personality coming through the radio. You can't see them, but you know that voice. And it commands that attention. It gets your attention. Well, let's imagine him having all that within him. Just imagine. And he's in Eden. Okay, hold on. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. You see what I'm trying to say? So again, the God of Israel set him up. The God of Israel positioned him. Listen to the betrayal. Do you understand? It's like you've been given every conceivable thing by a man. He helped you out. He's done things for you. Your father, for example. Or a man, an influence in your life. And you turn against him. He buys you a house because you are homeless. 
He cleaned you up. You uh, maybe adopted you. Cleaned you up. Gave you everything you need. Put you in the best school. Gave you the greatest education you can possibly have. He put shoes in your feet. When you was of age, he gave you a car. You was of age, you had a wife, you married, he blessed your home. And now, you're big in yourself, he's sitting in your home. You look upon your dad's home and his wealth and his fortune. You have a $1.5 million house. You want his $15.5 million house. I want that house. This is not enough for me. This is not enough. I need bigger. But you have a $1.5 million house. <laughs> you didn't have nothing before. Now you want to go into your father's home and take that which is his. You want his servants. You want his maids. You want his cleaners. You want his cars. You want his entourage, as it were, or his people. And so now you set out to overthrow him. You set out to sabotage him. You set out to kill him. What an ungrateful wretch. That's why it says amazing grace. Don't sing that song, no Israelite. That's a wretch that's going to do that to their father. A wretch. Let's, uh, let's get into this. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Who, can, who could say that? Who? You're an anointed cherub that covereth. You, the, the God of Israel gave you everything. You were in the mountain of God, walking up and down, just casually. <laughs> Us, we wouldn't even be able to make it. The minute, the minute we our eyelash, we're just dead. But you're walking fully fledged up and in down in the mountain, the fiery place in the midst of the stones of fire. That's where he was walking. Let's read on. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Do you understand that? Do you see what the God of Israel is doing? He's made this man. Listen to what he's saying. I'm creating, I made you perfect from the day you were born, from the day I created you, from the day you walked into the Israelite nation, worldwide ministries. It's a pattern. I made you everything you needed. It took time because that's what time does. It helps to create and to perfect you don't perfect things in like one day. We're not born that way. Our God has taken time and effort and he's put everything into you to perfect you as a man. And now you walk in the most holy as places of God. We're God. That's what I'm talking about. You've walked into the holy places. And now look. Yes. Let's see what become of you. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that I was created till iniquity was found in thee. What is iniquity? Mischief, con scheming, wicked evil. How can I plot? It's not enough that I've got all of these pipes in me. I want more. All of my goals and jewels. When I stand up, everybody knows who I am. I don't know. I, don't want, I want more than that. I want more. Wherever you want, you're in the midst of holiness with our God. I want more. Not good enough. You want more. You want the blood life of the God of Israel. You, I mean, I'm not saying he has blood, but you understand what I'm saying. You want, the, you want his role. That is betrayal. Watch it now. And it says in verse 15, Thou was perfect in the ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquities of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee, and they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Listen to what is to become of the one that you are walking after to betray the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That 
is your end, if you like. You see, the servant is not greater than his master. You serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, great things will come upon you. Because he said so. Back in the book of Deuteronomy, back in the book of Exodus, he said so. But if you serve him who has been fallen and betray our God, this is what will become of you. You'll be consumed with fire. Because why? One of the worst things you could do is to betray the very same hand that stretched out to help you. The same one that is feeding you. That is betrayal. And that's a great betrayal, if you like. That is the greatest betrayal of what he did to the God of Israel. And he came down and he wrecked the whole earth. He wrecked the cities of earth. He wrecked husbands and wives, Israel. He wrecked families. He wrecked children. He perverted every single thing against the God of Israel. The God of Israel says, A, you say Z. He says, B, no, I mean X, Y, and Z. Everything against what the God of Israel said, that's what pleases your heart. Because you are a traitor. That's it. A traitor. And we don't like traitors. Because traitors are work everything against the God of Israel. The God of Israel says, keep the feasting days. As Priest Kirk read, it was outlawed and ruled that anybody that kept the feasting days with an Israelite was disdained or killed or got rid of. Stay away from these people. Burn down their synagogues. In fact, don't even use the name Israelite. You're all Christians. Do you understand what I'm saying? Or you're all some other denomination that doesn't exist. And listen to the term denomination. What it means is demonination or something like that. You're demons. Nothing to do with my God. Nothing to do with the God of Israel. So listen to what the story. I've just read a couple here. Just to see that betrayal. That betrayal. And it's high betrayal. Listen, how do you think the God of Israel feel? Okay, you have a son and you love your son. Imagine somebody has a son. Don't put yourself, but you understand what I'm saying. And that son betrays you. How does it feel? You have a friend. They betray you. That's why I read the Psalms that have been given to me. My own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Oh, and when he goeth abroad, he talk all people business. But thou, O oh Lord, have been merciful to me. Look what Lucifer did. The same one that the God of Israel rose up, he turned right back against him. The God of Israel. Why you turn against him? My own familiar friend. It's the same story. The same story. Betrayal. Betray, betray, betray. And with betray comes lies. With betray comes death. With betray comes iniquity. With betray comes every evil conceivable work. Because if you can betray your brother, I'm telling you, man, you can kill. You can kill. But I tell you this. There's one that sees and knoweth and judgeth all things. Seeth and judgeth and knoweth all things. And you see, what you have to understand is why. People might say, okay, please tell and I hear what you're saying. No, where is, but how, 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 how does someone just betray somebody like that? Is it just so easy just to betray? Is it just an emotion? People, everyone tries to think very carnally, very logically, very gentilely, but nothing to do with Israelite way, if you like. Israelite way, everything has got to be against Israel. The God of Israel. He says this. No, you say that. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. That's why you be like Lazarus and the rich man. You be like the rich man on the other side and said, oh my gosh, please let me go back and tell my family. Too late. You don't hear Moses and the prophets. They ain't going to hear you. The one came from the dead. Luke 16. So let's turn again. And as I'm going into Luke, let's go to the book of Luke chapter 22. And I know we all know the story, but I think it's relevant to be spoken. Priest Kirk spoke about they will deliver you up and they will turn their back on you to the authorities and all these things. They will do that. Stand fast and stand strong in the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We all here have been betrayed once or twice or three or four or every time. <laughs> it's multiple. It's with our people. It's in the people. But why? Why? All right. Consider Job even. Consider Job. Just for one second. Job had many opportunities to turn against the God of Israel. In his anguish, in his grief, in his despair. But he was sowing. He was said, you know, let me just make this offering, this sacrifice, just in case. Now, 
Satan decides, all right, you know, I'm thrown down. I'm walking up and down. I've got my allegiance, 33% with me. I feel good, you know, earth is mine, man. Yeah, and he presented himself, maybe at feast day, when the sons of God came to present themselves, he, he came too. Oh, where you been? Yeah, walking up and down in the earth. Have you considered my servant, Job? Yeah, I can't get to this guy, man. I gotta, trust me. If I take all these things, he will turn against you. If I do this, he will turn against you. Go away, come back. Oh, you come back again, yeah. But take away these things, I am telling you, let me touch his skin. Let me do it. He's gonna turn against you. Save his life. Do that, but don't touch his life. And all these things, Job did not turn around. Even a foolish wife said, just curse God and die. Betray him and die. That's what, that's, that's what it might be. Turn against God and die. No. He said, well, you're a foolish woman. You speak of those, are you drunk? Are you high? Like what Andrew said in the, you smoking weed? Ganja, something? What is, what, what, what's wrong with you? Go thy way. Though he slay me, yet will I trust the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He might, he perplexed up Job. He allowed, look, look at Job. Everyone wants to say Job, 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 but you're going to live. You have to understand what he said. He did not turn around and betray the God of Israel, though he was going through the greatest affliction that none of us will ever experience. You will not experience that. Lose your wife, all your children, your livestock. Bumps and gumps all over your face. You're unrecognizable. Imagine having bumps in your tongue. You can't even eat. Imagine not being able to drink water. It just feels, and the food feels like dust in your mouth. Imagine having all these things on your skin and you're boiled up and you're aching and you're paining. You can't even lie on your back, it hurts. You lie on your side, it hurts. Pus is coming at your face. All these things happen to him. Easy, all you have to do is just say, curse God and die. Or maybe even worse, say, you know what? God is making this happen to me. And guess what? Guess who's going to be standing up there waiting? Oh, yes. Are you going to do Job? Just acknowledge me. Lucifer or Satan, sign a contract, I'll make it all go away. He was the one I was doing in the first place. So he got your soul, and that's what happens to our people. In all this, Job did not sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? He had an opportunity. Curse God and then die, or go over to the other side. He had, he, had, he had the truth. He had the opportunity. Job was wise. He knew spiritual things. He could have said, he could have called on how much. We don't even know how to do it, apart from the bishop. There's a, there's, there's, there's a new bishop in town. Have you heard of him? We'll, we'll get to that later. But I'm telling you, he, all this he did not turn against the God of Israel. He knew. Look, Lucifer was right there. Satan is right there. All he had to do was just call on another God's name. That's all he wanted. It's a battle. But the God of Israel said, you know what? You, Satan, turned against me. And you are aimed, you are a, <laughs> anointed cherub. You. But this mortal man, flesh and bone, break him up. He will not turn against me. Oh, I love that. Think about the story deeper. A power of God who walked in the fiery stones of God, the mountain, turned against the God of Israel. But Job made weak some fleshly bones. We feel pain. We can't even walk through. I can't walk through this thing. These celestial beings, all up, can do everything, mighty, powerful. You read the scripture, pipes in him. All the diamonds, his beauty deceived him. Got too pompous, looked too good. Nice hair, glowing skin. Probably tall or something And these things. Turned against the God of Israel, has more understanding. But Job, ha, I like it. Job, a man, flesh, flesh did not turn. That shows the power of the God of Israel. And that's not to be misunderstood. It's not meant to be something you just look over. Think about the messages that come from our elder Shadrach and the Israelite nation worldwide ministries. Think about the messages. Think about the words even in the book of Job and how he did not betray our God. He refused to betray him. Kill him in first, but he would rather die first before betraying his own or the God of Israel. Let's get into it because I get 
excited and I digressed a little. Luke chapter 22, we all know the story. Again, another spiritual high time of the Israelite nation and of Israel. And the stupid saints said that we mustn't celebrate these things because the, the Jews killed Christ. Okay, but we just read Matthew 24. It stands forever. And let's read it. It says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priest and the scribes sought how they might kill him. <laughs> See? Do you see what I'm trying to say? Again, the same story. From heaven to earth, same story. The chief priests looking at the Christ. I don't like him, man. This guy's healing people. He's so famous. Everyone knows him. Man, we can't even get in his words. Again, a representative of the God of Israel. You understand? The God of Israel's son. You think the spirit... Okay, I'm, I'm going too far. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being the number of the twelve. Do you think that Satan only entered into Judas? Do you think his buddies were working around the chief priests and the scribes? What, do you think that they were acting alone? They're reenacting exactly what happened up in heaven. Let's see if we can get him. You think they can't see the Christ? They'll use and manipulate human vessels as and how they please. Because you're weak. You're weak. And, they were, and they're trying to see, let's, get, let's use his own to get him. Let's use his own. The chief priests, scribes. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and the captains, how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to him with sandwiches. No. Money. Money. So betray your friend, be a number of the 12. Betray the Christ, someone who is with you, for money. The stinking spirits, uh, I'm going to keep calling them that, that work with the chief priest. Listen to what I'm saying. It's the spirit to exactly of Satan against the God of Israel, exactly what happened up, up in heaven. How am I going to get these guys, let's overthrow him. How are we going, guys, gather together? How are we going to kill him? Same story. Exactly the same story of betrayal. Exactly the same. Satan, Lucifer, part of the heavenly host. You read it. He was one of the covering angels or cherubs, as it were. Walking in holy places. Judas, a number of the twelve. One of those that walked with the Christ. There you go. There you go. From internal. That's it. That's the one. Same, same spirit. Same evil, nasty spirit. Let's get in. And he said, and he promised and saw opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. You see, you have to understand. It's the same story. However you splice it and dice it, they use the same method. The same modus operandi of how they do it. Was that a bit of Latin? I don't know. Something like that. Of how I'm going to get. How am I going to get what I want? I need him to betray you. Because that's the that's a hurtful thing. Because it's someone that's close to your body, close to your loins. Someone that sat and ate with you. Someone that's with you all the time. You turn your back and you destroy them. And you know how they do it? He do exactly what, what Judas did. He went around talking behind the back. Murmuring with the chief priests, the captains. Give me some money. If you give me this money, trust me, I'll betray him. I need it. I'm going to sell him out for money. Sell him out for money. Oh, there's a heavy price for them. There is a heavy price for them. You know what happened to Judas? Can anybody tell me? He died. And guess what happened after? Why? Because Satan came out of him. Satan now left Judas. And then he realized, oh, what? What did I do? Too, I don't care what you did. It's too late. He tried to give back the money. What is that to do with us? Thank you for the job. Good, good job. 
What did it say? It would have been better that that one that betrayed him was never born. Good. And that's what I say to all traitors of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have no mercy at all. And I say that with all the love in my heart. I really don't. Because to betray somebody who has shown you life, who's given you everything that you need, when you were down and you were sick, who put every, even with, the, even with this one, every conceivable thing, he raised you up. And then now this is what you do. I will more defer to my brother Job and say thank you, Job, for showing us that it's possible, even though we're going to the lowest hell. First, don't curse the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who are you? Go and, you know, some people get high-minded with themselves and they get to, you know, these things end up in them. Go and read Job 37 onwards. It will soon correct you. If you have the eyes to see that and a spiritual awareness to understand what's being said, it will soon sober you up. You're going for your moaning and you're groaning. When the, when, <laughs> do you understand who spoke to him from the whirlwind, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob? Do you understand what was said to you? Who made man? Who made you? Was you there when the foundations was laid? No. Was you there when I formed everything and said it won't be moved? No. Was you there when I made the skies and the clouds and all? No. You are nothing. Do you understand? Without me, I am God. I've got Leviathan by a hook. Now, if Leviathan by a hook and the God of Israel is big, right? That's this small, my friend. So look at the God you're dealing with. And that's my limited understanding. That could be even smaller. Do you understand what I'm saying? That to betray the God of Israel, you just sentence your whole life on the other side to endless pain, as it were. Just read the book of Luke 16 again with Lazarus and the rich man. Read it again. Don't just read it once and you understand. No. Read it again. It's just in entirety. The rich man even betrayed his own brother, Joe, um, Lazarus. Yes, he did. Because what was it? The greatest commandment, to love the Lord thy God. He's betrayed the God of Israel even. With all thy heart and with all thy soul, second like unto the first is to love thy brethren as thyself. He, he, he didn't know what to do. That's it. He put riches, listen to what he said, rich man, over him. As Elder Michael even said today when we're having the discussion, it is easier for a camel to go for the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Look at that. Guys, you've got some work to do, man. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. And because it's just, that's the currency of the world today, the other side will use that to their benefit. Good. Take it. But understand, you pay a price. And you will wish when you're burning on the other side of anguish and torment that that money you could give back, just like Judas, what, what, what for? You wish you want to give it back? No. Your, your life is sentenced. Your sentence is sure. Connect what's been said. As I'm wrapping up, because I get very excited, you see, and I want to go deeper and deeper and harder and harder. But um, I get squints from the eyes from behind the camera. And um, I have to move on. So let's go to the book of John. John chapter 8. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read from 41. I'll read from 41. And it goes, Ye do the deeds of your father. <laughs> then said they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. <laughs> Jesus, or Christ, said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceed forth and came from God. You understand that? I proceed forth and came from God. God neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Do you understand? That is a deep verse to know that the God of Israel, he say, he's saying it again and again, and you can't even understand what he's saying. I've sent, I've been sent. I'm not sent of myself. The God of Israel, my father sent me. You see the respect he has? Father and God. Not Yeshua, not Ababa, Baba, not all these things. The name and the titles prescribed for him to call. And he said, Why do ye not understand my speech? 
even because he cannot hear my word. You understand what I'm saying? So there are people that you're going to speak to about this doctrine. There are people that are going to be in the doctrine, leave and go about their business. They still understand. Lucifer didn't understand the words of the God of Israel up in heaven. That's why he turned and he rebelled. You don't understand nothing. You don't understand nothing because you're stubborn and you're stiff-necked. And you're like your father because iniquity is found in him. So if you find yourself behaving in mannerism of betrayal, understand the high level degree of where that's come from. And it's come from who? Your father. And we're going to tell you who your father is. Ye are of your father, the devil. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, there's sometimes I wish I could save more him. <laughs> yes. So you get the feeling and understand what's being said. You're of your father, the devil. And the lusts of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. We just read it. He tried to overthrow heaven. He tried to say that he shall ascend in and be like the most high above the stars of God. His father even. His creator. He is a liar and a murderer. That's what he is. And that's who the God that you serve when you betray the God of Israel. Because he did it in heaven. You're following in his footsteps. Like father, like son. That is you. When you betray the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. That is you. And it reads... Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. You know, sometimes I wish I had that, um, maybe a cross between Elder Andal's voice, Barry White's voice, and just so it comes through your, through your TV screen and really emphasizes. <laughs> oh, that just said to fast and pray for that. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> but maybe this, this is the voice I've been given. But when you feel what's been said, this is the Christ speaking here. We're not talking about just anyone. He just said, he's telling you he's the Christ. Right there, back up in verse 40, 42, 43. You don't understand what I'm saying? I'm from my father. He sent me. I'm not of myself. The words I'm speaking to you is from the God of Israel. You are of your father, the devil. Do you understand? You're, bet you're betraying me. You're betraying. You're killing innocent blood. Just like Judas. Surname Iscariot. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. You see, the truth is something to understand. It's very hard for some people to digest and to understand truth. It hurts you because it makes you feel uncomfortable. And that's a good thing because while you're living, you have time to make an amends. You've got time to adjust. You have time to understand, oh, my God, and fall on your face before the altar of God, before your face and say, God of Israel, forgive me. But you know something? It just said way back in Isaiah, the pomp. Why you use that word? You have this pomp. People that you can't tell me nothing. And that's my limited way of doing it. Imagine how he was doing it. Probably with all the bells and the pipes coming out of him and the way he speak and the diamonds and the glow of his face and his beauty, as he said, deceived him. And his mannerism and the flow of him. You're charged up, man. You're charged. Your, your chest is high. <laughs> that's high. The pump, why does it say that? Why does it use that? It means that he was exceedingly beautiful. He was well. He convinced a third of heaven's angels to follow him and kill them in the process. If you understand what I mean. He destroyed their whole life. They can never return into heaven. For what? You just got pushed down. How are you coming back up? You've got Michael and the entire task force of heaven. Beings that we can't even imagine. And see, we're tiny. Hmm. Let's read on. Because he spoke the truth, they didn't believe the Christ. The truth. He that is of God heareth God's words. You guys should be so happy. Everybody in the room is of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus. You hear the voice. <laughs> this is why I love the Christ. He never spoke of himself. He said, my father, God. He never said, hear me. Hear the words of my father. When you pray, say, Abba, Father. Everything is the glorification of his, the God of Israel, man. And he's saying, if you, he never said, if you hear my words. 
You just saw me, you know, um, feed the 5,000. You just see me heal this sick man. You just see me heal, raise the dead. He never did that. He said, you hear the words of my father, of God. What did he say? He said, you are of him. Thank you, God of Israel. That's what you should be saying. Because if you heard the voice of the lion, you're going there telling me like how Priest Kirk read that you must kill all the Israelites. Don't, you know, banish them. Call yourself a Christian. Put a cross over every single item of your home. In fact, tattoo it into your skin. Go and sell your soul and call me, for, call her, I don't know, a strange person, father, and go into a box and confess your sin. And then he tells, say, three Hail Marys. Where did it say, I can't, I don't know, Michael is a professor of the, of the Israelite nation, World Bank Ministries. And to this very day, he has never, ever once said, it said, we must say, three Hail Marys and two whatever it is. I don't know. I'm not Catholic. I don't understand. I never was. I don't understand. It doesn't say these things. It doesn't say it. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. If the, the Christ says that to you, my friend, you are in deep, deep trouble. In fact, he's already said it. But you're hearing it from the Israelite Nation Worldwide Ministries and from Elder Shadrach and the council members. If you are not hearing the word of our God, the truth is you're not of God. So why do you? It's the truth. But you hate us because we speak the truth. Just like Lucifer hated the God of Israel. Because why? He told him and put him in his place. Now you want to ascend and be like him because you don't like what was said to you? Because you can't take reprimand? Because iniquity is found inside of you so much. Now you, okay, it's enough that you are discontent. But you're discontent and you take 33% with you. You take out the children of the nation. You take out people of the nation because of your pomp. That's what you are. You are a devil and you are the sons and the daughters of the devil. That's it. There's no other words for me to describe you. I wish I could. My old Andrew's looking at me. And let me read on. But I said this, Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we <laughs> not well that art thou a Samaritan and has a devil? Jesus answered, I have not a devil. I have not a devil, but I honor my, myself. <laughs> God, no, but I honor my father and ye do dishonor me. Do you understand that? Because I'm sent by my father. I am sent by my father unto thee. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh judge, that seeketh and judgeth. Do you understand? Look at we just said that, Elder Michael. Elder Kastrilli, did you read that? Or is it me? It said, and I seek not mine own glory. The go Wait. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Listen, the, the God of the Christ came down. And he was just healing, teaching. Got the 12, teaching, healing. Things you've never seen. All of a sudden, speaking with Moses and Elisha, <laughs> that must have been a great sight. That must have been a great sight, eh? And the guys woke up, huh? Huh? don't tell no man to this day. Do you understand what I'm saying? He didn't say, I'm going to, all right, guys, it's me. Just so you know, all of these things you're seeing is me. But look what he did. He said, my father. Not like the other one that said he wanted to overthrow the God of Israel and be above the stars of God. You're sick. You're unstable. You're deranged. And this is what I'm trying to say. Those that seek after us and use the media to betray even your own soul by telling you you're not Israel. Don't like Israel. Call yourself Gentile. Call yourself Buddhist. Call yourself Baptist. Call yourself Presbyterian. I don't know what that is. And call it all these other things. Apart from you are an Israelite and you betray our God by worshipping these false gods of the dead. Whereas the Christ came and he spoke not of himself. He spoke of his father. He said, what? When you pray, say, our father who art in heaven. Not our father is in the box. Not father that's, that's spoken, a, you know, probably a spliff that they call it. Is that right, Lennox? And after that, he goes back inside there. 
You know they do that, yeah? <laughs> and then they go in. That's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is important to understand these scriptures. It is important to always remember who your father is. And our father is the greatest God of all. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He requires the loyalty of who? His people. He requires the loyalty of the spirit of truth, which has been loyal to him from the day one. Even his son, the Christ, is loyal to his father and did not betray him. Brethren, friends, and guests, I wish you all a great day. A great day. And as I were wrapping up, because you see, like I say, you know, you get, you get in the groove, you see. I have two minutes, or oh, one minute now. I get into the groove and, you know, I have to wipe my forehead because they said my forehead's shining. But the new moon, all Israel, very important. The new moon is coming up just now from Sunday sundown to Monday sundown. Sunday sundown to Monday. Which camera am I on? Am I on this one, this one? Okay, guys. Just so we're clear, the new moon is coming up Sunday sundown to Monday sundown. Please, that is a holy day. It is a feast day and it's holy unto the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And all Israel who knows how to keep that day, keep it holy. This is a great time. We're now, what, two months out of Abib and it's time for us to now continue the building of the Israelite nation worldwide ministries. If you hear the voice of our God, Understand there's a voice coming through the spirit of truth who is with our elder Shadok and the Israelite nation, worldwide ministries. I bid you peace, love, truth, prosperity, and power. Peace.